have decided initially that all the points at the front of the layout that are within easy reach of the operating position will be hand operated. Those towards the rear of the layout and behind the proposed back scene will be operated by Pico point motors. As this is the hidden siding area and already contains transformers etc the points will be surface mounted using Pico adapter bases. The reasons for me not motorising the points at the front of the layout are varied. Firstly, to keep the wiring as simple as possible. Secondly, unfortunately a number of the baseboard framing supports are rather inconveniently located just where underboard motors should go. Thirdly, I'm unsure if softboard really lends itself to underboard point motor mounting and fourthly I am sure that I do not lend myself to fitting and wiring up point motors whilst lying on my back on the garage floor. These decisions are not final and may of course change once I start operating the layout but for now they will do. I have glued a small plastic base to accept the screws necessary to hold the point motor adapters in place. Yep, it's that problem again of softboard not taking screws very well. To find the correct position for the adapter base, attach it temporarily to the point bar and put the motor in its mid position and do the same with the point blade. Mark holes through the adapter base, drill and then screw it down. I didn't screw the adapter bases completely to the baseboard as I found that this restricted the movement in the motor itself. It seems that the screws need to hold lateral movement to enable the points to switch but not vertical movement. A little bit of play seems good. As mentioned in a previous episode I always use a capacitor discharge unit or CDU for short. This is connected to the 16 volt AC power supply from a transformer. It stores up power and discharges a kick to ensure that point blades switch over every time. Without one there might be a danger that the point motors themselves do not have enough oomph to operate the points which may then get stuck and possibly burn out the motors. The CDU has been moved slightly from its previous position and is now held in place with sticky fixers. The tag strip at the right hand side of the picture is for the common return wire for the points. Using the common return method of wiring the point motors only need a simple three wire single pole double throw switch known as SPDT for short. Seen on the control panel the point and section switches all look much the same but there is one important difference. A point switch must be a passing contact switch to provide a short burst of current to operate the points. It is spring loaded and when released returns to the centre off position. If it weren't spring loaded and was left permanently on the point motors would quickly burn out. The wiring diagram for point motors is, thank goodness, much simpler than that for section switching. 16 volt output from the transformer goes through the CDU to two tag strips. One is the common return, goes straight to the point motors and the other goes through the SPDT switches and thence also onto the point motors. The tag strips are located in different positions. The coin return tag strip is located in the centre of the baseboard as that is nearer to where the point motors are located. The other tag is on the board just behind the main control panel and can be seen in this picture. 
the top two tags are for the track and the lower one is for the points. The exit points at the left hand end of the station will probably be covered by a tunnel or bridge and may be difficult to operate by hand. A point motor was therefore required but it was not possible to mount it under the board at this point. Also there is no room adjacent to the point as the track is very close to the edge of the board. So the decision was taken to surface mount the motor on the other side of the inner track. Eventually some sort of scenery or building will be used to cover it. I have dug out a small channel under the track and connected the motor to the point with a piece of brass rod. It was necessary to remove the plastic track webbing to allow the rod to operate smoothly under the track but this meant there was a chance that the rod could come into contact with both rails and cause a short circuit. A thin piece of white plastic card was therefore glued to the bottom of the rails to prevent this from happening. This will be painted brown in due course to blend it in with the sleepers. That's all for now. See you next time.